Darty Robinson is the type of person who keeps organized files. She's a paralegal, often juggling many cases at once, so orderly record keeping is key. But one of the files this Portland, Oregon mother keeps has nothing to do with her job. This is my Daniel investigation file. This case dates back to a call she got a year and a half ago. It was about her son, Daniel. I got a call out of the blue from his girlfriend. And, um... Sorry. She said the paramedics were there working on Daniel, that she had found him, that he was blue and unresponsive. And I told her, I said, tell him his mama loves him. And she says, well, I'm sure he can't hear you. I said, tell him anyway. And so she did. She texted her family, telling them to pray for Daniel. In tears, she left the office and got in her car. And on the way home, I got the call that there was nothing they could do. And then he was gone. Daniel was 29 and otherwise healthy. Darty says he was sweet and had a knack for cooking. No one knew why he died so suddenly. That was, to me, part of really the worst part is because the word to us initially was they thought that, you know, he must have committed suicide. He must have taken something. And I kept saying, that doesn't make sense. Darty didn't get any answers until after Daniel's memorial service when she got the results from an autopsy back. She still keeps that report in her file so she can go back and reread its conclusion. Autopsy revealed no evidence of trauma to explain death. The autopsy pointed to problems with Daniel's heart, and that gave Darty some peace of mind. At least now she knew he had not killed himself. The manner of death is natural. But the autopsy also left her unsettled. If this could kill Daniel at 29, could it strike her other biological children? That was the question. Is it going to happen again? Which one of my kids? Me. I'm okay if it's me, but I'm not okay if it's my kids. Not long after Darty got the autopsy, she read an LA Times story about a new study happening in San Diego. Researchers at the Scripps Translational Science Institute were using gene sequencing to take another look at cases like her son's. They wanted to go beyond standard autopsies in situations when young, seemingly healthy people suddenly died. They wanted to perform what they called molecular autopsies. At first, their plan was to focus on cases local to San Diego, but Darty was persistent. Script scientist Ali Torkamani says one of the reasons they agreed to take on Daniel's case was a strong family history of early heart failure. The fact that there was more than one sudden death uh, in the family at a young age sort of highlighted the point for us this, this is likely a, a genetic uh, issue. So this is my dad, he was in the Navy. Daniel, at 29, was by far the youngest, but a number of Darty's relatives had died from sudden heart failure in their 40s and 50s. Her dad had his first major heart attack at 52. There's my will, and there's my insurance policies, and my bills. Darty has been prepared for her own sudden death for years. And then there's little Mr. Daniel. With strong clues that Daniel's death may have been related to his DNA, the Scripps researchers sequenced genes from his heart tissue. They also sequenced his mom and dad. And that's when we found this uh, mutation in this gene, TRPM4. Torquemani says mutations on this gene have been known to cause a disorder called progressive familial heart block. It short circuits the heart's electrical signals, eventually causing the heart to just stop beating. And it's that mutation that we believe is the cause of sudden death uh, in, in Daniel and, and other uh, uh, family members. The mutation is likely to be causative. For sudden death. The researchers found the same mutation in Darty. She was the one who passed it down to Daniel. And because it's an autosomal dominant gene, there's a 50% chance she passed it down to her other children, too. And then that's Daniel. Scripps director Eric Topol oversees the study. He says not every case they look at is this clear cut, but he thinks Darty's case illustrates how a genetic discovery in cases well, like this can provide valuable, even life saving information to surviving family members. Because this is something that is eminently preventable with things like a defibrillator. So but whereas all these relatives through many generations had sudden death, we may be able to actually uh, preempt this in the future. And that's exciting.
Darty is now considering getting a surgically implanted device to protect her heart from what happened to Daniel's. Okay, go get it! The researchers still don't really know why the mutation would kill Daniel at 29, but leave his mother unaffected at 60. She's not gonna behave. Hey, come here! But Darty says it would be foolish for her not to take precautions. So here's where I emailed Kathy. She's now also on a mission to get other family members tested for the mutation. We need to test Mary's kids. She thinks it's important to make sure Daniel did not die in vain. Daniel did something significant. He gave us answers that'll benefit not just dozens, but potentially down the road hundreds of people, maybe even thousands. Because I don't believe that this is just limited to my family. David Wagner, KPBS News.